Hey there, this is Nils Beardford and today we are making some mushroom pauldrons. Get your pattern printed and cut out and prepare your leather. We are using 3.5mm thick vetch tan leather. Moisten it completely from both sides. This way we can shape, tool and mark everything on it. After marking the edge lines, we can cut everything out. Now we can transfer all the grey lines for tooling also on the leather. To get some nice parallel lines I like to use a groove cutter reverse so I push it so it does not cut, it only marks. The third line I deepen also with a bone folder. This basically replaces a swivel knife here. But a swivel knife is also completely fine and I use these on the more complex roundish lines. The marked lines are perfect for tooling like here with the camouflage along the edge or a little bit later also with the bevel line. A stone hammering into the leather comes nice for giving everything a little bit aged look. We also need a bunch of round holes and sewing holes. Also we we'll want to bevel the edges here. To shape our piece a little bit you can use any kind of hard ball and use it to shape here the sides a little bit more roundish. Also I press and bend these edges a little bit to make them stand out a bit more. For our base pieces the process is pretty much the same. We just do not cut out the edges exactly here. A rough shape is completely fine. Since it is a nature style set, I use swirl knife and a bunch of tools to get in a look of roots and branches and bark. We also want to give our base piece already some rough shaping. Especially important are these edges here shown that are bent outwards. For dyeing I will always like to use my airbrush and let's start with a clear coat of green and then go also with some dark brown along the edges. For the base pieces it's pretty much the same, we just start with some light brown and then go with some dark brown over it. Next up we go for some resist over it to prepare everything for the antique gel and protect the leather and the dye. Also put some on the edges and then you can burnish them. After your resist is completely dry, we go over it with some antique gel, just put it everywhere and then wipe away the excess. And another coat of resist to protect the antique gel as well. To make sure that the top pieces stay in the shape we shaped it, we use some scrap leather and glue it on the flash side.
For mushroom pollerance, we of course need also some mushrooms and on all each of these I got a short video to show you how exactly they are made. Be sure to check them out, links in the description. Also got some new flowers here, but they are quite simply, you just dye them and bend them in shape. Before we glue everything together, we want to make sure that we got all the pieces positioned correctly, also that we know where we want to put our mushrooms. And then we mark where we want to put the pieces exactly, rough up the leather underneath a little bit and glue them on. If you're using contact cement like me, put it on both surfaces and let them dry for at least 15 minutes. Before everything dry completely, it's also a good idea to make sure that the rough shape is maintained. And then we can cut all the sewing holes completely through and sew everything together. Once you reach the position where you want to put a mushroom on, just Press them underneath the leather, cut the holes completely through and sew them on as well. Now everything is fixed into place and we can get rid of all the excess leather. Cut it away exactly as possible, then sandpaper it, bevel the edges, Redye them, put on some resist and then burnish them. Also we want to punch all our round holes completely through. Now we can moisten the leather from the flash side and make sure that the shape is exactly like we want it. We also got these little flexure pieces as I call them and we want to rivet them simply on our main piece. We also need to attach our pauldron somehow so this is what this closure piece is about. The exact position of these holes most likely will change a little bit over the course of the process, so this is why we did not punch them already in advance. And this is how your piece may look like now. We simply have to do it pretty much the same manner for all the other pieces as well as for the other shoulder and we're good to go. These are quite a bunch of different pieces so I give you a closer look of each of them now. The piece that we just made is the highest piece, then this one comes and the only difference here is this gap that we want to close by sewing. On the next piece we also got a gap that we want to close by sewing as well as an arm strap. This is the lowest piece and there's only a base piece and an arm strap. To connect them all together I like to use some flexible strong straps which are here from backpacks and I simply open a hole inside with an awl and then put a rivet right through the hole. Simply follow the pattern and note that there are different lengths of rivets here. For the lowest part we need only short ones. And that's also the piece we are starting with. Put the rivets from the straps through the holes and simply rivet them on. Follow this process until all the pieces are connected.
and to connect the shoulder armor to yourself, I like to use some kind of this system to attach it to whatever I like. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I made the left side a little bit different than the right side and will both showcase here. Be sure also to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it and check out my other videos. This and many more patterns you can find on my Etsy store, linked down below. And see you guys next time. Have a great day.